Hi everyone, this is Kevin from ThunderbirdPhoto.com. Today we're going to ask a very strange question. Did Mark Twain and Edgar Allan Poe see giant birds in Pennsylvania? If Pennsylvania folklore is to be believed, Mark Twain once spotted an immense black bird while riding on a rock on the present-day grounds of Ravensburg State Park in Clinton County. Edgar Allan Poe encountered a similar remarkable creature while visiting the Poe Valley, possibly named for his ancestors, in Center County. Did these two icons of American literature come face to face with the Keystone State's legendary Thunderbirds? These brief anecdotes from regional lore were published by Thunderbird researcher Gerald Musinski, who possibly collected them while interviewing local residents. Musinski sadly passed away in 2008. But the stories didn't arise from nothing, even if earlier written sources about these giant bird sightings are as yet evasive. Twain and Poe are indeed entangled with Pennsylvania history and legend. In the late 1860s and the 1870s, Twain embarked on national lecture tours that included several stops throughout Pennsylvania. He made a one-day visit to the Lock Haven Opera House in Clinton County to perform Roughing It on January 16, 1872. It's certainly feasible that Twain could have visited the nearby future site of Ravensburg State Park, established in 1933, on this or another trip. Twain is known to have stayed at the Fallon Hotel in Lock Haven. Situated within Rauschtown in Crawford Township, Ravensburg State Park is indeed known for its rock ledges, on which Twain perhaps wrote, and the ravens that roost upon them. My good friend and Lock Haven-based historian Lou Bernard documented an unfinished story collected by prolific Pennsylvania folklorist Henry W. Shoemaker about the doomed Philip Rausch, whose family founded their namesake place. The tale recounts Rausch's tragic love life and the jealous and murderous ghost of an ex-girlfriend. Circling ravens portended these events, leading searchers to find Rausch's broken body, thrown from his horse after something or someone spooked it. Near present day, Ravensburg State Park. There are several disagreements in Pennsylvania folklore and history about where and how Poe came to pen his beloved and atmospheric poem, The Raven. In one account, Poe visited Poe Valley in 1839 and experienced an intense, unrequited romance with a mountain girl, Helen Halfordy Park, also known as Helena Hallett. Mind you, he was married to his teenaged cousin, Virginia Clem, at the time. According to the story, Poe wrote The Raven and dedicated it to Helena, which either happened in the immediate aftermath of this adventure, during a sleepless night at the Old Fort Hotel in Center Hall, Pennsylvania, or once he returned home to Philadelphia. This version, or versions of events, is, of course, disputed. In 1941, Pennsylvania journalist Agnes Seelan Schoek exposed the holes in the tale, such as the fact that Poe never dedicated The Raven to any Helena. It is a good story, but we do not believe a word of it, wrote Seelan Shoke, aware she was draining the fun from a saucy folk tale. The Edgar Allan Poe National Historic Site, a red brick house Poe rented during his years in Philly, did at one point claim to be where he wrote The Raven. It might align with the first publication of the poem in January 1845, but not necessarily the earlier Poe Valley story. Poe lived in several homes during his 1837 to 1844 stay in the city of Brotherly Love, and he wrote many of his great works there, but he only resided in the current historic site from 1843 to 1844. The Poe family then moved to New York City, where today plaques and a large raven statue on 84th Street commemorate the demolished Brennan farmhouse, where in 1844 Poe wrote, or at least finished writing, per one of the plaques, The Raven. Shoemaker recorded a slightly different version of Poe's time in Poe Valley. In the folktale A Modern Petrarch, the young poet's quest to seek his inheritance fell by the wayside after his brief and tempestuous courting of the beautiful Helena Walters. She was the daughter of a leading farmer in the valley, who ended up choosing another man, Abram Hallett, who Poe considered his inferior. Poe despondently left the area, soon afterward visiting the prophetically named Raven Hotel in Milroy, Pennsylvania, and strolling along the scenic banks of Alexander's stream. He sat down on a log where he could faintly hear the calling of ravens in the tops of the tall oaks on the apex of the cliff which overhung the fountain and proceeded to write a mournful poem inspired by Helena, which was decidedly not the raven but a different poem he would later discard. Mary E. Phillips, in her 1926 biography Edgar Allan Poe the Man, wrote that Helena was actually Helena Elizabeth Liddell. 
whose family mansion Poe had stayed at while seeking an inheritance of timber and farming acres left by his ancestors in Poe Valley. Poe and Liddell, who was then 18, took an interest in one another, with Poe quickly becoming infatuated. It was poor timing, as he was already married to Virginia Clem, and she was secretly betrothed to a man named Jacob Weaver. Liddell was unmoved by Poe's literary pursuits and began to find him odd, so she frostily rejected his declaration of love and married the stalwart Weaver. About seven years later, the married Miss Weaver received an anonymous envelope containing an exquisitely handwritten copy of The Raven. She found it heavy, tiresome, and didn't get past the first verse. Phillips wrote that Shoemaker, anxious to meet the woman who claimed to have known Poe, paid a visit to her estate. Shoemaker noted that the former Ms. Liddell, then 78, had aged gracefully, remarking, I complimented her appearance and turned sadly away from a beautiful mask with a skeleton steel within. An interesting parallel to this video's topic, quoting Shoemaker's letters, Phillips wrote that Shoemaker told of seeing majestic golden eagles soaring over Poe Valley. Shoemaker wrote, I will never forget Poe Valley one lowering autumn afternoon. There had been a storm. We had come to a vast open country. Out of a thicket flew two superb golden eagles so near that the whirring of their wings frightened our horses. The majestic birds shot upward with the velocity of biplanes to the near touch of the storm clouds, then began tremendous circles in their flights. Masters of high air, they triumphantly disappeared through its storm-tossed embattlements. Phillips observed, via the work of Pennsylvania poet John H. Chatham, the golden eagles would have been numerous in Poe's time, and she pondered if they might have inspired the nature-loving poet. She wrote, It is interesting to think how their mighty flights must have enthralled his attention, while opinion of their imperialism fluttered to his feet for his own, in The Raven and other pen inspirations. Meanwhile, Trough Creek State Park in Huntington County, Pennsylvania, also makes a claim that Poe was influenced by its resident cliff-dwelling ravens in writing his famous poem. While it's hard to say if Mark Twain or Edgar Allan Poe ever saw immense black birds in Pennsylvania, as Musinski claimed, there's no doubt that the two authors and the local population of Corvus Corax have left an indelible mark on residents of the Keystone State. Perhaps we will one day stumble upon these elusive monster tales in some quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. <laughs>